Ciao, mi sa, bragato. E pastel de nata. Cristiano Ronaldo. E pastel, e vi Cristiano Ronaldo. E Ronaldo, Ronaldo. Of course, of course, Ronaldo. So, what, are you religious yourself at all? I am. What religion are you? I'm Christian. Christian, okay. So, what your question was? What was your question? If you aren't mixing with that affirmation, if you aren't mixing politics with religion, which was something that was separated in some countries. In Christianity. One of the. In, in, in Western Europe, you had to have a separation mm -hmm. because the church and politics were at loggerheads. Yeah. They were literally fighting each other. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, in Islam, we don't have this problem. Why? Because the po politics has to be governed by morality and the morality has to come from Islam. So a politician cannot, for example, now in Western Europe, in America, you can lie openly as a politician. It's in fact the status quo. You lie and you deceive and you get into politics however you can to be elected. You can take money from people, come from companies, it's called lobbying. Uh, I know. We know what lobbying is, yes? <laughs> yes? Lobbying is bribing, but it's a legal way of bribing. All of these practices are haram in Islam. One of the greatest tenets in Islam is that never bring somebody to be a leader who aspires to become a leader. Anybody, who's, anybody who stands up to be elected, that's the last person you want to elect. So politics in Islam is the framework of politics, the morality of politics is ruled by the tenets of Islam. So for example, different communities, they will choose somebody who they feel is of good character and intelligent to rule their area. And all of these people will get together and they will select one Amir, a person who will run the country. This is a much fairer way of doing things. I am, I'm, again, I feel that we are mixing, and I, I totally understand, I'm, I'm a bit ignorant in terms of uh, religions, I know my religion and that's why I'm here listening to you as well, but again I think that we are mixing two or three different topics that could be separate, because again, if you elect someone to rule you, and I totally agree with you that a, a ruler should not um, aspire, to, aspire be, exactly. to be a leader, that's what, ma it make, uh, what, that's what makes him a great leader. Yes. Right? But again, it's about the person and not really about the religion itself. Yes. And uh, I, I, I would see, I wouldn't find any issue of a Portuguese ruler to be Muslim or Jewish, depending naturally if the person is a righteous per yes. person. Yes. Uh, no, but my point to you yes. is what mechanism can we adopt in Western Europe and in America to cl clean up Absolutely. what we have at the moment, right? And you know, the problem is when you don't have a yardstick to measure uh, how a person should be, how they should fit in a particular role, you will always have this problem. Yes. Now, with Islam, you know, the, the leader that's selected is selected not just for his ability to lead, because he has a, you know, good relations with people and he can negotiate and, and discuss, but also the fact that he is, he feels that he is, um, uh, you know, connected to the Creator in a way where he has to be honest and transparent. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the, the problem that we have today is that there is no mechanism because the people today to become elected, they follow whatever strategy they can adopt, whether it's morally acceptable or immoral, it doesn't matter. But in Islam, you can only attain leadership through this moral framework. Now, I'm not saying that at the moment the Muslim countries are doing it exactly in this way. I'm not arguing that, but I'm giving you the Islamic principle of how it should be done. You know? but, it, but the thing is that you see, when we separate politics from religion, effectively what we're saying is that somehow the politicians are separated from the moral code that God has set down for humanity that they are somehow separate and in Islam we don't see it that way. We see that the whole community, everybody, including the politician and the leaders are responsible to follow the religion of Islam.
which is to be honest and just and fair. And, you know, they can't fill up their own pockets. You know, I'll give you a classic example of uh, the second caliph. Umar Khattab So he is now the ruler of the Islamic Empire. Now, during some campaign, there were some goods that were distributed equally amongst the people. Now he's the leader. He was very tall and very big. So somebody asked him the question. They said, Umar, how comes your everybody's cloth is small, but your cloth is quite long? Where did you get this extra cloth from? He's questioning the leader of the whole Islamic empire. He said, can you give me a few moments to answer the question? He said, please do. He said, my son had a portion of the cloth which he donated to me. And so I stitched it together. This is the join. This is why I have ended up with a greater amount. The man, he sat down. Now for us, this is the Islamic way of doing things. Now, even the leader is questionable, can be questioned about things. And that he's not, he doesn't receive, uh, you know, a lavish palace and lavish cars and lavish clothes from the people's money just because he's the leader. So this is the Islamic concept. But uh, let me ask you, uh, you said you were Christian. Do, are you, do, do, would you say that you believe in Christianity or do you identify more culturally as a Christian? Uh, it's hard for me to, to say that I identify more with certain aspects okay. because I'm, I'm biased on okay. that, so I will skip that question. Yeah. But I, uh, I believe in, in Christ, I okay. believe in, in, in Christ's message and yes. the message that comes from the Bible. Nice, nice. Uh, do, you, do you... Basically... Yes, yeah, sorry. Be again, believing in a, in a principle and every religion has its own principle. Yes, yes. A righteous principle, yes. the principle of justice and being... Uh, fair, fair and, and honest. With, with and of course, of course. And honest. Yes. That's, that, that's, uh, that's what I believe in. So, uh, the thing is that, in, I, I don't know, do you know much about Islam at all? or Something. Okay, so we obviously we believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Exactly. As a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. He's mentioned in the Quran 25 times by name. Mm -hmm. uh, the Messiah, the anointed one. We, but Allah says something very interesting in the Quran. Allah says, do they not ponder on the similitude of Adam? We created Adam from neither mother or father. So what Allah is telling our Christian friends is that, look, Adam was created without mother or father and we created Jesus without a father. So we don't call Adam God effectively. So we would say respectfully, respectfully to our Christian friends that therefore Jesus being born without mother or father would not make him God either. We would see this as a miracle of God. So what, what do you think of that, that concept that we have? I need to think about that. Yeah. I so, need to think so about because what we, what we say is that, look, even, uh, even though we don't believe the Bible is preserved, we do believe that there are certain things in the Bible, for example, that do seem to show Jesus praying to the Father. And we would argue that God doesn't pray to anything. God is prayed to, but God does not bow to, any, to another God. Okay. Yeah. No, so, uh, so in the garden the of point, in the garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. it says Jesus throws his face onto the ground and he worships his God, worships God, worships the Father. And in the Old Testament, Moses and his sons, they put their knees and their hands and their face onto the ground and they worship God. We Muslims, we pray the same way. So, what we would say to our friends, our Christian friends, is that that this points to a being that submitted to the Father, just like all of the other prophets, they also submitted to the Father. And this should be, if one, if one thinks carefully, this should be enough to appreciate that actually, if he was truly God, then number one, he would have just told the people flatly, I am God, like the Father is God. Worship me as you worship the Father. He never said that. There are some texts that people say, okay, it does seem to look like he's divine. But we would say that many of these things maybe were added afterwards. Exactly. I mean, we are talking about something that happened 
2000 years, years yeah. ago. Yeah. With the historical documentation that is subject to several interpretations and changes naturally uh, to both of the documents, yes. say the Quran and the and the Bible, and of course naturally all of those. I would disagree with you about the Quran. We have a very nice we have a very nice leaf uh, banner there. The, you, the, you, exactly preserved yes. So the, one of the unique years. things about the Quran is that we did not rely upon the 